Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to anecdotes, to history, to really wherever our whims take us. Is Doctor Doom hot? That's right, answering the serious questions here on Casually Comics. But it's an actual question that has floated around for a while and the answer has shifted over the years. And in fact, some are still confused. Some get really passionate about it and some get passionate as to why people are asking it. But you know what? There are all kinds of questions in fandom out there. You put a character in a mask, people are going to want to know what's underneath it. It may not be a question that interests all of fandom, but that doesn't mean it's not worth asking. We met Doctor Doom and looked at his first appearance in the Fantastic Four comics a while back on this channel. I will of course card and link you up. He was introduced, mask firmly on. He's had that from the start. In fact, his appearance was meant to be akin to the Grim Reaper, with the armor in place of the traditional skeleton underneath the cloak. With Jack Kirby, who designed the character, stating, oh that's right, I got quotes and today I even got a video clip. It's an exciting time. It was the reason for the armor and the hood. Death is connected with armor and the inhuman like steel. Death is something without mercy, and human flesh contains that mercy. Kirby would also have some very interesting things to say about what Doom looked like underneath the mask, but that would occur years later. So before we get started, I'm Sasha, and if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and join us on this comic book journey. Also, I have a coffee. Follow me over there and potentially support in the name of Doom. And let's get started. Doctor Doom first appeared in the Fantastic Four number five in 1962 and would become one of the most beloved foes, not just of the Fantastic Four, but of the Marvel Universe. Doom ended up being complex, flawed, and for many fans, intriguing. He was also presented as a mystery visually with the mask. And so the question began to arise more and more. What exactly did Doom look like underneath the mask? How bad was the scarring on his face? Fans knew it existed as his backstory had begun to be expanded upon. It was in that backstory that one saw how he blamed Reed Richards for the explosion that ruined his face, which was of course what led to him covering it in a mask in the first place. In Fantastic Four issue 10, which also got randomly meta with Doctor Doom meeting Jack Kirby and Stan Lee during the issue, Doom removes his mask and both creators react in horror. There's even an ugh oh, his face! So of course the seeds were sown. Fans wanted to know what he looked like, they wanted to see too. Reed and Doom switch bodies in this issue as well, it's pretty great, and they draw Reed with angry eyebrows because you know that means evil. Fantastic Four Annual Number 2 from 1963 would be an extra long story all about Doom. Also in that story you see that Reed just barged into his room, picked up his notes, and was reading them and was like, oh, a mistake. I can see why he was salty. Some rando comes into your room with a yellow sweater and is just like, all of this is wrong. I don't think I want to listen to either. More importantly, here we would get to see Doom's reaction to his appearance in greater detail, with him being devastated by how ugly he looked. My face is too horrible. No other eyes must ever gaze upon it. I'll hide from the sight of mankind, somehow, somewhere. This story also provides an important line that will become central to the hot or not debate. And that is that after the mask is made, one of the makers tells him that it's not cool yet, but Doom puts it on anyway because he's Doom and he does what he wants. So okay, from there we go on. We see his face occasionally in the shadows or sometimes in certain events fully healed through magic or some other kind of tech. And for me, interestingly enough, that was the star of the question. I saw his face looking completely fine in the Spider-Man cartoon from the 90s during the Secret Wars arc that they did, where he healed it, but also in that 2006 anime style show that few people remember. And for some reason it got me wondering, what if his face is actually fine or just not as bad as he thinks it is? Doom is intensely dramatic after all, I mean you have to be to yell about yourself in third person. And I was not alone because Kirby apparently got asked this question a lot too. I was just late to the question party, you know, by not being born yet. Eventually he would answer, and there's even a sketch from the 70s. I tried hard to find an exact date on it, but could not, but I did find the sketch where Kirby drew what he thought Doom looked like behind the mask, and it was intriguing. Doom's face was near perfect with a small scar, in fact a scar that other villains would have put front and center. How do we know this is what Kirby intended? Well he said so himself. For example, we have this clip from a 1985 con. The mask is a very handsome guy, okay? He's a good looking guy. But there's one thing wrong with him. He's got a scratch on his chin. And he's frustrated. He knows he's extremely handsome. He's got the scratch on his chin, but you have... <coughs> Why haven't you got a scratch on your chin? And of course, he doesn't realize that his own anger and frustration is mounting. He's not a bad guy, as you saw in a Fantastic Four. He'd give the Fantastic Four a wonderful meal. 
before he killed him. <laughs> he's a good looking guy, and he only has a tiny scar on his cheek. But because he's such a perfectionist, he can't bear to see that imperfection. He isn't hiding his face from the public, he's hiding it from himself. So okay, if that's the case, then why do most modern iterations show him having a more severely disfigured face and present it as this is the face of doom? Why is there an argument as to what is correct? Well, to answer that, we have to look at John Byrne's interpretation. The Fantastic Four had waxed and waned in terms of popularity over the years. And writer John Byrne is credited with injecting them with some much needed lifeblood when he took over the run in 1981 with issue 232, and his Doctor Doom appeared in issue 236. He too would take his time expanding upon the Doom mythos. Byrne had a slightly different take on Doom's face, but it also lined up with Kirby's. Let me explain. This is possible because different writers have different takes, but the good ones can make everything still feel like the same character, or present the changes in such an appealing fashion they become preferable. Like what Byrne did with Superman. He made so many changes in his reboot, and most of them are now just considered to be core Superman facts. His Doom would have a noticeable scar along his cheek and chin, bigger than Kirby's, but still not to the extent of scarring that was implied. Here's where the it's not cool yet line comes into play. Doom would go to seek to have a mask made to hide his face, but once he got there, he was so impatient about putting it on that he put it on before it was cool, hence creating the very scars and injuries on his face that he already saw to the extent that he perceived them in his own mind. This at the time was attributed to his own vanity. There was a contention between the two versions as some felt that Byrne was being unfaithful to Kirby and Kirby is very beloved in fandom so if people sense in some way they feel he's being mistreated you better look out there are pitchforks being sharpened just duck and cover run and hide. But I mean we can't question the realism of the explosion too much when it comes to Doom because really he should be dead because that blew up right in his face. People have gotten deep into this. Is this a retcon? Is it not a retcon? Does it make sense with the canon that happened before? I I personally think they're both interesting stories that have potential. I'm also a fangirl, a shipper, and an occasional fanfic writer, so I'm also coming at it from a, well, there's always headcanons in your own space to write stories and explore the ideas if they ever aren't explored to the extent that you want within canon. Because contrary to popular belief by those who do not often delve too deeply into the fanfiction realm, it's not all self-inserts and Mary Sue's. A great deal of it, in fact, in many fandoms, the vast majority of it comes from exploring canonical hints and cues and expanding upon them. Yes, that includes shipping, but also includes various plot points or fix-its where people feel the canon has gone wrong. So many Rick Grayson fix-its out there. Many people in those fandoms are coming from a very strong canonical basis. Some aren't, but some are. Basically, it's a varied space is what I'm saying that cannot be defined simply as people tend to, just like the comic book space. It's also far older than many people think. The modern iteration that people recognize the most dates all the way back to the 60s, with the most prominent pairing being from Star Trek, but there were others around as well, and these were compiled into zines and a whole bunch of things. In fact, these zines were part of what helped to create the con space. The modern name for it, in terms of, say, terms like shipping that people have come to know, actually comes from the 90s and the X-Files. It dates even further back than that, even further back than all of that. But that is pretty self-inserty because they found stories written by the Bronte sisters about the Duke of Wellington and his adventures and their places in them. So this concept is old, it's not new. Tangent over. So is Doom hot? Yes and no. It depends on how much of a canonical stickler you are and where you are in the time period. And also both can work. This debate, however, does rage on to the point that some are confused as to how he should be portrayed. Like they'll see him and be like, is this, is this right? Are these they? You can see this in the way that Doom's face reveal was reported upon in Secret Wars, the 2015 edition, when he revealed it in issue 9. Some firstly pegged this as the first true Doom face reveal, even though we had seen it multiple times up to that point, but it's fine. So some cliff notes to illustrate how there can still be some questions around this reveal. Leading up to this, there had been an incident with the Living Tribunal, which had resulted in Doom not being able to change his face. Just whatever it was, it was. He couldn't harm it or heal it. That was the rule. However, in this Secret Wars event, when his face is revealed, some feel that since he was God Emperor Doom at that point and head of his own universe and living tribunal did not necessarily need to apply, that perhaps what was seen was his projection of his own face. What he saw or felt that he looked like manifesting, while others again feel like, no, this is it. That's the face. For those of you who were like, who was even asking this question? You thought it wasn't that deep? 
You thought it was a game? Some modern interpretations of what's going on with Doom's face is that he suffers from severe body dysmorphia, brought on by the trauma of the explosion and triggered by his own pre-established since his inception character flaw of perfectionism. That he can't handle being anything less than what he perceives as perfect. While others feel no, we'd seen characters react to his face previously. And they reacted like it was something hard to bear witness to, going all the way back to issue 10 in 1963. Because of this, some claim that Kirby's drawing is a big troll to the fandom. But to that I ask, why? Kirby seemed pretty earnest in his clips to me. Maybe he just changed his mind over time. Kirby and Burns' versions both flow well because they're both plausible when it comes to relating to Doom's core character. Either way, Doom is interesting if he slightly scarred Doom or severely injured Doom. Both are compelling stories and only part of what Doom's got going on. I definitely don't think one is more pure than the other, or that liking one or the other makes you a better or worse fan. To me, Burns' changes don't seem malicious at all, but an attempt to marry the two seemingly conflicting ideas together, Kirby's idea and the reactions that had been seen in the comics themselves. He was interested in Doom's hubris, and he viewed the mask as a big part of that. I couldn't find anything at least that had Burns saying like, Puh, I spit on Kirby's virgin. Patui. But I mean, if you can, please send it my way because you know I want to read it dramatically. In issue 278 of Burns Run, he uses the same panel as Kirby did in the second annual, or at least recreates it, which hardly sounds salty to me. I mean, although you could be playing the long game, hiding your salt for a later day. Interpretations change, and this one still can too. Maybe it already has. Dun dun dun. What are your thoughts on this? Are you pro scar doom or are you pro body dysmorphia doom? I have a scar. I guess I too can embark on a life of super villainy, but I think I'd like to leave mine out. Mask the one side of the face and not the other? Yes. Subvert expectations. <laughs> Don't let your dreams be dreams. Share all of your thoughts down below. And while you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to discuss comics with me. I always appreciate it. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.